And what a season it has been. We have grown, we have adapted, but most importantly, we've enjoyed fantastic Overwatch all the way through. What better way to finish it than with a good old classic Battle for Los Angeles, everybody. I'm Mitch Leslie here with Matthew Morello, and uh, yeah, pretty much laid it out there, Matt. We have the yeah. ninth Battle for LA coming up for our last match of the season. Yeah, it's, uh, well, one, I think it's just kind of crazy, like, we're all the way at the end of the season. I think it's just kind of been all over the place, uh, obviously, but uh, to get here with a Battle of LA at the end, it's a it's a huge way to finish it off. You see the standings where we are now for the 2020 season. Uh, the Valiant sitting in fifth, the Gladiators right on the outside of that top five in sixth place. Right, the Gladiators want to maintain sixth place, but in order to do so, they need a victory here, otherwise they risk falling behind that plus eight map differential that the Atlanta Reign have, especially after what we just saw from Atlanta in that last series. They are raring to hit the playoffs running, as must the Gladiators be. And this is, uh, again, this is a matchup which always brings us exciting results. It's often uh, a very close one. And our pre connections presented by Xfinity, we're going to cast a fond eye back over some of the biggest matchups in the Battle for LA that we've had so far, Matt. This is the eighth. Uh, the ninth one, sorry, and both yeah. teams are tied four and four as it stands. Uh, and you see how much like some of these rosters have changed uh, so much. Uh, the Valiant as well, the color scheme, uh, yeah. in a, in a, in a very positive uh, direction. Uh, yeah, the third change for the Valiant. But uh, no, this has always been a really close matchup. When you have a rivalry like this, both teams represent the same city. You know there's going to be even some extra on the line in terms of pride for these games. Not only, of course, their end of season standings, which is important for the Gladiators, but again, the pride uh, of being the top team in Los Angeles. For the Valiant, though, as we sort of heard from McGrady yesterday, the result in this match isn't so important to them. Uh, the Valiant have still, uh, they've already clinched that fifth spot, and they're definitely looking towards the playoffs now, which will feature a new patch and uh, undeniably a new meta. So we may see a couple of different things from them today. They don't exactly have a, a bench, you know, full to bursting, so. I don't expect to see too many crazy differences in their in their setup or team composition, but here you have it. The last three head-to-heads in the Battle for LA have gone the way of the Gladiators, although you feel today that may not hold. Yeah, it's always been pretty close, and I think the Valiant have been a team definitely uh, on the rise this season. They've uh, looked really good in a, in a season where a lot of people didn't expect a lot from them. So uh, coming into this series here, particularly, definitely would say they're the favorite. Uh, I do think we'll have a really good uh, Widowmaker hitscan showdown, though, uh, with Bird Ring in, uh, in uh, KSP. Yeah, that's right. Of course, there are three DPS players for the Valiant available, but so far we've seen KSP and KSF. That's right, your acronym yeah. cornucopia, and we have it again today. Both <laughs> uh, of those players in the starting lineup, and no actual changes uh, to to the Valiant here. They will uh, be bringing the, the Santa lineup, so, you know, uh, sorry, gig fans. You're going to maybe have to wait a little bit longer <laughs> to see him. Uh, we, but we've been really impressed by by this team in general, I think. Uh, KSP and Bird Ring, you already highlighted their head-to-head, -head, Matt. There's a lot of potential there. KSP put on one of the most... Uh, disgusting performances we've seen from a hit scan player, maybe outside of Arns yesterday. Uh, and he's going up against Birdring, who I would say is at... Re I, I, he's either reaching close to the peak of his career or he's created a new one because he now has come back in invigorated with Ash and other hit scan heroes being in vogue once more. Yeah, really, it's the Widowmaker for Bird Ring. So when you kind of look at these stats, KSP really is that good on Ash. Uh, we've seen that throughout the season as Ash has been... Uh, really a focal stay of the meta, but Bird Ring on the Widowmaker, he, he has been very strong. We take a look at the Gladiator starting lineup. Uh, nothing too surprising here. Kevster and Bird Ring in terms of the damage dealers uh, for map number one. That's right. And of course, we've seen Mira subbed in for Big Goose on a couple of occasions there to play the Batiste or another flex support. So the Gladiators have been starting to rotate out their previously very locked in support lineup. And now we head in towards our map set. Nepal is where it all begins. We will have Havana uh, and King's Road. So two maps where that hit scan might be especially important. I'd say Havana more than any. And if we get Sanctum on Nepal, we've seen a lot of teams that have tried to play uh, a little bit more of that Widow. We know the Valiant have the pocket Farah pick as well. We saw it on Village. Yeah. Uh, we've seen it before on Sanctum as well, man. And I think for the Valiant, although McGravy said, uh, no, not as important of a game, uh, you'd still like to win this and make sure you're going in the right direction towards uh, the playoffs, right? Like, we have a week off, like, end the season on a loss would be pretty tough. So, 
uh, to see them kind of end here no uh, with a win Definitely wanted to uh, against the Gladiators, who are another team uh, who's the in the don't upper don't echelon to, of North you know, America. I think it just gives the Valiant here. even more momentum. We'll see the Gladiators, if they go with a Junkrat, that might actually be rewarded in the event that the Valiant come out with sort of an Ash and Symmetra combination of sorts. A lot of opportunities here, and yeah, we'd love to see a bit more Winston dive here, Matt. And it's been a lot of fun, even some Wrecking Ball. We've seen the Valiant specifically play Wrecking Ball on this map. Yes, uh, take a look at what both teams coming out to spawn thus far. Gladiators, uh, potentially uh, with OG on the Winston. We talked a lot about that, you know, towards the second half of this season, where he's looked really strong uh, back on the Winston when Winston's in the meta. Uh, you could play Bird Ring on the Reaper. This gives you no answer to the Farah, where we've seen the Valiant run it uh, on this point at times, but uh, looks like they're going to go with Ash Echo in terms of damage dealers, and they will be playing that Wrecking Ball. KSP on the Ash. The there will be a clash in the middle up on the high ground there, so KSP gets, you know, for a brief time, a little off angle. A headshot there on Kev still would have caused him a heck of a lot more than just a headache. And immediately the pressure comes towards KSP. He's going to give some ground, but I tell you what, he gives as good as he gets. And he's able to get plenty of early damage down. But it's McGravy to falls first, and OG currently sleeping on the job. Yes, I, uh, although they did pressure out uh, KSP, doesn't result in a kill. It's enough to be able to take out some of the remaining players of the Valiant. So OG uh, with Big Goose there did a good job. Just get right in KSP's face. Uh, we saw, uh, I believe it was the other day with the Valiant, uh, the, the opposing team, I forget the match, but they were just refusing to really get anyone in KSP's face. And allowing him to just shoot freely at range will result in a loss. So you're seeing a really good play from the Gladiators this far, putting pressure on him. Not denying any opportunity to get real value out of the Echo. The Gladiators are already in control of the point, but they know they need to keep pushing. Give it up. As soon as they start to give spaces where things can fall apart, OG may be slightly overextended there into a focusy beam from KSF, which can always catch you by surprise. And so the Gladiators fold back as there was a... A little cheeky back cap there by the Valiant to get them 10%. Now the Valiant go together for a retake. Yeah, the Valiants are going to be able to take this right back, though. Uh, they got the back cap, which drew some players in the Gladiators back, but it really split them off. That'll be an EMP that comes in from Kevser, connects to four players, but Rain does get the Valkyrie off to heal everybody up. Yeah, and it looked like OG wasn't really in any position to follow that up. KSF had his wings clipped for a brief time, and it was no pressure. He just backed around a corner and waited for the EMP to expire. The Valiant is still in control of the point now, and OG gets caught by McGravy on the high ground. Could be a self-destruct and a mech reset for McGravy now. Forcing the Gladiators back once more, and even a free catch on Shaz. A huge fight here for the Valiant now, and the Gladiators are working with just Greggs. Uh, that'll be a copy from KSF onto the Sombra, an EMP from him, which connects with Kevster. They'll get the cleanup in play. So the Valiant now have a chance to stabilize, catch their breath a little bit as they end up winning this fight. They'll go up to above 50% on the point. They'll have Dreamer with these mines here to split some players off. The Valiant have plenty of tools now to control the small space, which is the point. Birdering has a death blossom here. Well, the Valiant are a little bit slippery and are quite dispersed on virtue of their team composition more than anything else. And the sleep dart on OG there, so that'll slow down his push to the high ground. Birdering has to wait, but he might not have much time. It's going to be a sound barrier. The Gladiators are now going to try and brute force an engagement. Minefield on the point. Birdering seems to have caught Dreamer there, and yet he goes down. Chaz dispenses the Nana Booster space. He's also put to sleep, and Lastro is causing so much disruption to the Gladiators while they're trying to get everybody in position to win this fight. OG's forced to go for the Primal Rage as the Sticky Bombs came in from KSF, but it's enough. And the Valiant now move to Storm as they're going to get north of 84%. Yeah, I was going to say, McGravy doing a nice job extending this Dreamer coming in at the end, so get close to 90% here for the Valiant. A lot of ultimates needed to be used there for the Gladiators to be able to take it. The big one that they'll get back, though, for the next fight will be EMP. So Dreamer will go over to the Winston, a little bit more consistent than trying to make something happen with a ball. So you do have some ultimates here to use for the Valiant, right? One fight really wins it for you. Dreamer just testing now, probing a little bit. Bob is used, and KSF is in deep trouble. Yeah, looks like he got hacked there and was cleaned up by OG, and it will be an EMP. The Gladiators are using quite a bit. Kevster was put to sleep, but it came after the EMP, so should still be a comfortable win for the Gladiators now. OG will be healed up, and that'll give Shaz another nano boost for the next fight. 
And the Valiant end up using a lot here. They use Valkyrie. Lasho ends up using the Nano onto McGravy. And they use Bob. Uh, where it was what, like, EMP really used from the Gladiators? Uh, so now the Gladiators have an advantage here, Mitch, where it did look like the Valiant coming into that fight, right? You had a lot of ultimates. If you would have lost it, lose it quick, save some coming into the next one. It's Birdring getting very close to a Death Blossom. Four final blows, two deaths to Birdring so far. Nano boost is available, Death Blossom. No the Gladiators in a great spot in terms of ultimates. The Lastro's already gone down, no chance for him to hit any more sleep darts and disruption in this fight. The Gravy desuited. No chance to get his mech back by any other means. And KSF tries to go for a duplicate on the Sombra, but he's hacked before he could do too much more. And the Death Blossom will just clear the space. And the Valiant make an uncharacteristic slip up in a previous fight, spending far more ultimates than they had to. And it comes back to bite them hard. Yeah, and I think you see with the Gladiators, they're not necessarily worried. Like if KSF kind of starts to go off on like an Echo, or like I think they're willing to lose that way and put the pressure on KSP. Uh, if, if you can try and neutralize his impact on that game, you feel much better about your chances if you're the Gladiators. You saw at that time, they didn't give him any space to operate, to just kind of sit in the back, you know, hit shots with Ash. We'll see if they can do it again and win this map. And Valiant, composition they tried to work with, obviously they had the Echo uh, instead of the Sombra, and KS have got to masquerade as Sombra every now and then, but maybe would have liked to have just had the hack available to him more frequently. So no Echo this time around. We Bird Ring switching off the Reaper to the Ash. Let's see. Space we go and test the point early on here. Most of the Gladiators outside of OG will keep a respectful distance here. Space hack. Oh, and they burn him down so fast. I mean, he, he kind of had an idea. Uh, once he got hacked, you can see him kind of turn, try and make it down the stairway. But it may not matter, though, is Birdring on the flank gets three. So look at the I amount mean, of healing he's just getting from Big Goose, just pocketing, keeping him up through all of this. Isn't that absurd that he was sat on Reaper in that previous round and just played more as a, a deterrent for dive? Now he switches over towards the Ash and finds three quick kills at the start of the round. A round in which, by the way, uh, the space gets hacked right at the beginning and is desuited, essentially putting the Gladiators a player down. KSP would love to uh, get a decent vantage point there, but Birdring, it's a close shave for KSP. As that shot came from the low ground for Birdring, almost took out his opposite number. But look at it now as the Gladiators have all this pressure on, right? KSP is the one who has to shoot through all the chaos of the tanks playing in the choke, where the bird ring can just aim down sights at range and just spam the doorway when players come on through. Losing Kevster, though, is a tough one. I mean, losing your Sombra early, there's not really an excuse for that. Bird ring still in a safe position, though. He lets Bob go just to contest the point and give the Gladiators a chance to get a breath. Dreaming out Nano Boost and trying to chase after the Mercy. Give a big use is able to avoid him for the time being. There'll be a Primal Rage available, but Oji gets his off first. The Dreamer is put to sleep. The Gladiators still control the point. They're ticking up in percentage. And Big Goose has a Valkyrie, so a longer fight here for the Gladiators may not be such a bad thing. Lastro is brought back into the fray, and KSP is run into the ground by Spacey, identifies the Squish Gash, and picks her off immediately. Space is hacked, so we can't get back in his mech, so he tries to stay alive as long as he can. He can't. McGrave is able to finish him off eventually, and Kevster will have to leave with that EMP in tow. He lacks teammates in space, may not have a chance to re-mech, which means that Rez doesn't look quite as good. And well, Big Goose gets on the touches, so this will allow Space to come back into the fight. He'll get a touch, it's just the Gladiators extending their hold on the point. So they get it finally up to 77%. Now, the, the Valiant are quite fortunate to win that. You know, they end up using the EMP during that fight. Only connects with one player, connects with Shaz, gives the Gladiators an opportunity to even keep that going. Uh, now, Kevster with his EMP, you could use this to flip the point right back. And, and if you can get a good EMP and follow up for the Gladiators, you'll have a ton of ultimates for this final fight. That'll be a three player EMP there for Kevster. Dreamy here with the mana boost though, and OG didn't expect so much damage to be turned on him so quickly. McGravy got damage boosted, I believe, there, and oh, Dreamer got nano. Now the Gladiators will have to fold back once more. And it was an early sleep on McGravy that forced Dreamer to, to leap forward and put a barrier over him, and that was when the EMP went off. Valiant had plenty, though, in reserve to answer. That gives KSF now a whole fight match to build that EMP back up. Yeah, and see Birdring take a shot there. 
from KSP with the damage boost. Has to be careful as maybe you see a nano go in OG here and get to the point. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. The nano in OG, maybe a bob to the point as well. Yeah, bob's available, but he's quite, uh, I guess, weak against the EMP if it comes out and gets used. Okay, the Valiant actually gives the point up. Huge EMP on the Gladiators, though, so the longer this fight goes, the more percentage they're getting. OG tries to dive deep on the last but it's put to sleep, and Dreamer is back in the fight. Still, percentage is ticking up. The Valiant need to capture the point or remove the Gladiators or both. Right now, they're doing neither of them effectively at all. Rain's gone down, Birdring's able to pick him out of the sky, and Lastro is right behind him. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, he says, as Birdring fires up, gets another quick double, and the Gladiators maintain point control, and they should have a round win pretty comfortably here. Birdring takes flight, and the Valiant have their wings clipped. Uh, honestly, Birdring still keeping that top hit scan play going whether it's on the ash or the widowmaker we saw some of the stats uh before the game you know the head-to-head -head between uh, ksp and bird ring and ksp favored in a lot of those but over the last few games bird ring has really come alive uh I, I think he's looked back to the bird ring of old you would say uh some of the losses for the gladiators during that time was really because you got subpar play from a lot of other spots in the team uh, if everybody else keeps playing the way they are and you still get that performance from bird ring uh you're gonna see the gladiators rally off some wins he, uh, one here to end the regular season and potentially some of the playoffs Matt, it's simple. Bird ring finishes that map with 15 final blows and three deaths ksp one final blow nine deaths the gulf between those two couldn't be bigger so early on in the series and the valley are going to have to look to fix that real quick as map two is creeping up awful fast it's on the other side of this break The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
quite a start to that series, ladies and gentlemen. The Los Angeles Gladiators come out of the gate and oh, it's yeah. murdering who dominates. This sort of tells us, Matt, like it's not just been a flash in the pan. Bird Ring now, in this hero pool, every time he hits the battlefield has made a gigantic impact for his team. This is extremely good sign uh, for the Gladiators. It makes me bullish on them going into the playoffs because they can roll <laughs> Valiant in map one. It, it wasn't particularly close uh, in many aspects of the game. Yeah, on the long range hit scan heroes, Bird Ring has looked tremendous over the last few games. So to see him kind of have that performance against somebody who we hold to high regard, like KSP. Uh, although it is a team effort, a lot of other uh, pieces go into play for the Gladiators to make that happen. The pressure for Moji in space, you know, being able to push up, deny uh, angles that KSP would have liked. Uh, still, Bird Ring able to knock down a lot of shots uh, there for the Gladiators to be able to take that one. Havana coming up next will be interesting because uh, from what we've seen from the Gladiators recently is they move Bird Ring off of like a Widowmaker or Ash and have him end up playing the Hanzo. Uh, we do have one sub. Uh, this will be Mirror who comes in for Big Goose. So uh, this is something we've been seeing as of late. Mirror traditionally like a flex DPS player, but we've seen him play Zarya for this team. We've seen him play some flex support as well. So I saw this, uh, I think it was me and Bren actually casting yesterday. We saw a bit of the Gladiators play and they wanted to play this double sniper setup uh, quite a lot. Yes. Uh, you know, we were seeing Widow and Hanzo and you know, we started, we sort of began the discussion about that kind of composition against double shield and how it looks and you kind of know, right, when we see someone like, you know, Mira get subbed in, it probably means another sort of flex support role from him. What are your thoughts about the Gladiator sort of double sniper, the Widow Hanzo setup? Is it as effective as, you know, it otherwise would be against double shield? Do you fancy the shield pressure from Storm Arrow or what are your thoughts? We, we talked about it when uh, we were on the desk yesterday uh, during the game. And I think me and Scott both were of the minds where we liked having the Sombra in play, like Sombra Widow. Uh, I think having like double sniper, uh, it, it can be advantageous at times. But I think for the most part, the consistency of uh, EMP being able to pressure out the opposing Widow, uh, I don't want to say easily, it's never really easy, but uh, being able to use the Sombra to get into the back line, cause a lot of chaos, you know, have the Widow to look at different angles, always has to be cautious. I think we both agreed that having that pressure would be better than having the double sniper set up. Now we, we did see though in the very previous series, especially on Havana between uh, the rain and the shock that Sombra doesn't exactly count a Widow on her own. Uh, she, she can uh -huh. obviously go and sort of push her in the back line, but we saw a couple of occasions where Widow was hacked and Aunt still got, you know, two kills. It's still not a guaranteed thing that, you know, getting into the back line and, and sort of pressuring a Widow down can result in a kill. They obviously need to land that hack first and foremost. So that, that's maybe a style we might see a little bit more from uh, the Valiant. I don't know if they'll sort of fancy trying to, to play Hanzo here, but I mean, it gives you a little bit, right? I, I think it's... I think it's reasonable to say that, hey, you know, you add a bit of shield pressure to a composition that doesn't really feature it at all. I'm like Widow Sombra. Neither of those is actually looking to bowl those barriers down. But when you bring Hanzo in and maybe you have a Batiste or a Zen Batiste, a double flex support set up there and you're not playing like a Ryan Rush, maybe you can put more pressure on teams if they're trying to stack shields. Uh, uh, you we'll can, have a but yeah, I, I don't know. I still don't agree that it's the answer. All right, well, we'll have to see if either of these teams fancy that one. For the time being, though, get yourself reacquainted with one of the hottest stars in the Overwatch League. It's KSF. KSF, it's your time to shine. KSF gets Color Hex on the drive-by. KSF, here it is. Oh, here it is. KSF is running a month right now, dropping bodies left and right. KSF doubles down on the Widowmaker. KSF continues to be the star of this match. Again, KSF, you just can't get rid of this guy. KSF gets himself a triple. KSF, feel good moment there. Unbelievable. KSF, the hero, he comes up with the kills. Oh, it's an honest days of work for KSF. And there you have it. That's right. KSF, uh, you know, showed us a little bit of the Echo first and then switched over to the Sombra. And on the topic of him a little bit more, Matt, you know, you, you said maybe you don't fancy the, the Widow Hanzo. You don't really like to see the double sniper here. What then is, is do you want to see KSF doing? You want to see him on the Sombra oh, well, for the majority of Havana? Yeah, I don't think the Valiant will play that, right? I think the Valiant will probably play the Sombra with the Widow or Ash. I, I don't think they'll play the Hanzo type of setup like the Gladiators will. 
Uh, so I expect some more of the same uh, from KSF. Maybe we see the Echo like at moments, but uh, I really expect there to be a lot of Sombra from the Valiant on this one. Do we see more spawn camping now because Sombra <laughs> Widow kind of doesn't do a very good job of like breaking a spawn camp if you're attacking? Neither, unless you can get a pick from a weird off angle with Widow, it seems like your DPS don't really help you get far. Yeah, I, that, that's why you see the defending teams kind of push up at times, uh, right? Like if they're, but the offense can just switch really quick, which we see a ton. We see like McCree come out for like close to mid range en engagements and then a switch. So I think when you see the defending team push up to the spawn, uh, get that close, y you know you have to switch off of the Widow or the Ash. Well, maybe not even the Ash if you're on offense uh, and just kind of get out of your spawn door. Cause I think a lot of teams do get stuck there for an extended period of time. It doesn't seem like a huge deal uh, at moments, but it is still time on the overall clock, which Havana could be a difficult map to finish in general. And that's why we kind of saw some weird results on Havana in the previous series there between the, uh, the rain and the shock. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are just waiting to try and get Mira into the lobby as he will be a substitute for map number two. He's having a couple of issues in that regard. So we're going to go to a quick break to when we return. Map number two in this battle for LA is going to continue with Havana. A lot of big use's job is also speed, right? Yeah. And also, I've seen him sitting on speed. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not sure if they destroyed his translocator or just was surprised by the amount of damage coming through all those headshots, but either way, yeah, it's still a bit kick. Into the corner. Oh, 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 oh. Buddy had a fair fight. He thought he was going for the lift. Nah, he's not. Hit her in hot. They maintain the front line. Excellent. They're looking for pickoffs on the side. We have to get too much here so far. Sparkle though off of the plate. Finds Masa. And X, he finally connects as the eternal. Work at the outskirts and now both teams. Very heavily moving. Here's the full line. Still survive. Oh, but not longer. Sparkle. They went left. Ball doing yet again. A massive bionate comes out from Bedosian. A five member is again. Brog now coming through as the diva gets popped out of the back. And the world got nowhere to go. So we're going to off a prop. And that's just going to be a white old dynasty. Still in control. A lot of big use's job is also speed, right? Yeah. And also, I've seen him sitting on speed. Oh, 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 my God. I just hear somebody yelling at me. Timber! Oh, big Reminds 
at Paris except uh, substitute XT for Shockwave where you're looking for Shockwave to do the miracles and do the impossible. Now the clone, Reaper, into the back. Trying to throw the quick Death Blossom. This time focus down early. And there's the real Death Blossom. He's rolling on and immediately focus down. Shockwave does not care. 30 HP in a dream. Able to float right back out. And now Vancouver Josh is hit right back onto the point. What an enormous focusing beam. And even though the EMP comes out and hits four players, it is way too late for Doha to be investing that ultimately. Thanks for sticking with us, ladies and gentlemen, through that brief pause. We are back, and Mira is in the lobby. The Gladiators are about ready to hit the battlefield once more as we head into Havana. We've given a decent prelude, decent build-up into this one, Matt. Uh, fans at home may expect to see the Gladiators keep playing this double sniper, but you, Mr. Morello, Mr. Matthew Reginald Morello, are not a fan it's not, of the uh, composition. It's not my middle name. Uh, you know, Pocket, Pocket used to say it was James, which isn't, which isn't it either. Uh, oh, that's I, way I, more I, believable. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, considering the amount of times he, he said it, uh, maybe like a thousand, <laughs> it, it started to become believable amongst the... Uh, I mean, hell, even I, I thought about it. Uh, maybe my middle name was James at one point, but uh, no. See, with the uh, the Valiant on defense, uh, McCree, May, Screams, we're going to run to your spawn door and sit there uh, with a Reinhardt and a Moira in the mix. Uh, you wouldn't be playing the long streets angles with this composition. Uh, the Gladiators, we'll see. The, still some time for them to make some changes. Uh, most likely, though, not going to sub in uh, Mir to play the Lucio. Uh, Mir asking if everybody's ready after he took uh, 15 minutes to get to the lobby. Uh, <laughs> and KSF responding how we all believe. Nobody will be talking to Mir because he took forever to get in. Uh, this is the same comp that uh, we were talking about before the break, uh, Widow Hanzo, they probably will have a lot of opposition at the doorway and then have to switch off of this, but this will probably be what the Gladiators want to go back to. All right, here we have LA. Birdring on the Hanzo to, to begin with here in the Valley. Yes, they want to take up residence in the Gladiators left nostril and leave graffiti and old Pringles packets there when they're done. Tests are down early. Good start for the spawn camp. Yeah, the Gladiators switch off because they know they're going uh, to basically come up and play the spawn door. So uh, they have to move off of that comp. So they'll come back. They'll have double shield in the mix with uh, Bird Ring now on the McCree. Just trying to run them down a little bit. See Dreamer there using his shield to see which door the Gladiators are going to come out of. Or does he do the third person view when he has that barrier up? So far, so good. He's able to back away there. Keep his team shielded up. Eventually, he is run down. The Orisa makes it hard for him to keep it shielded up. And the Sigma combination there. The Gladiators eventually able to shift the Valiant. It took them quite some time, though. Yeah, it took a bit. Uh, we haven't seen longer holds there at the spawn door, but I uh, know. Now, now the Gladiators can switch to a composition they kind of want to run uh, throughout the extended period of the map. They'll bring in the Widowmaker. KSP will go over to Widow as well. Uh, Shatter and Coalescence on the table for the Valiant. Uh, and you've built up a, a decent amount towards Blizzard and Maze away is pretty effective. So you'll stay on some of these heroes for the Valiant for another fight. Both teams' Widowmakers will be looking for picks on those Maze if possible. Already an Ice Block has to be expended there by Kempster as Dreamer swoops down on him. And the Valiant here are on the wrong side of the map. <laughs> they are where the defenders are, but they managed to isolate Bird Ring. They'll give up. Uh, a little bit of position here, but the card didn't move in the meantime. So the Gladiators there are playing down, and Dreamer has a Shatter to dispense with. Can he find anything though? Transcendence from Shaz here. Keep everybody topped up for the Gladiators. are also going to end up using a Supercharger, a Swing of the Hammer, and a miss. Nothing there as uh, Dreamer now just has to hold his shield up. Hope to live a little bit longer as uh, will not be the case. The Gladiators, they'll keep the payload moving. Yeah, it looks like Space was ready for that one, Matt. A very lazily deployed barrier in the direction of Dreamer meant that his shadow was ultimately going to be to no avail. So there's a mix-up in composition here. Dreamer wants to play the Orisa as well. But McGravy's so close to self-destruct. Looks like he sticks to the Diva for the time being. Some key ultimates for both teams. Matt, Double Blizzard's going to be here, but Infrasight is popped by KSP. Another fight here for the Valiant. That'll be a Halt plus Gravitic. Flux will get rid of Rain and he had Sound Barriers. That's a huge pick for the Gladiators at the beginning of this. Spike playing essentially solo here. 
Kempster now joins him at this off angle that OG and Shaz have already gone down. A good start for the Valley now if they actually want a decent hold from this position. KSP, tough to catch for space. Yes, his hypersphere is bounced, but that angle, really hard to find any purpose on the enemy Widowmaker. KSP keeps himself scarce, but crucially gets a pick on Shaz during that fight. Yeah, and it's not as easy for the Gladiators to put pressure on KSP when you have the Orisa Sigma in play. All right, now it becomes a lot more of this 1v1 Widowmaker style of play. Kevster now goes over and he'll play Sombra. So trying to get a hack, put some pressure on KSP as well. So you'll be close to an Ant Matrix uh, here for the Gladiators, but really with 40 seconds left, that's uh, it's all you may end up with. Hack on KSF also means no ice well, block for the well, main. No way they, of blocking they almost need, uh They almost need the hacks to go on to uh, uh, Rain well, before the sound barrier came down, but that doesn't mean anything as KSP takes his head off. Yeah, Birdering there goes for a pretty wild flint shot as he sees KSP arcing through the air. With McGravy having gone down, no one's chance with the Transcendence in play. The time is right for the Gladiators to make a move. The amplification matrix in the door, and there's only nine seconds left in the round. It's gonna be here for the Gladiators if they want to keep playing the attack side of the uh, Havana. McGrave is gonna come in for the backside now. Colette pressuring down Mirror, so Shaz has to go for a transcendence. KSP has a secret angle. I don't think anybody on the Gladiators are aware of his position now. Oh, Mirror, no! He had an immortality field down, but he jumped too high away from it. The Exo boots ended up being his own demise. He goes down, and that's the bulk of the healing for the Gladiators, and this is all gone wrong for the purple and white. Not good uh, for the Gladiators on offense. There is another Valiant. They kept they, they kept coming back with the Lucio, getting these fast fights. You know, they're really like three fights uh, before the payload even got to the distance. Uh, close enough to be able to kind of like get a fight win and put it through for the Gladiators as the playing close definitely paid off. They burned some clock there, but it was really KSP having the space to hit some of those shots that paid off. And now with the Gladiators, with how they look on defense, this is the composition we were talking about, where they move Birdring off of the Widow and they put Kevster on the Widow and they bring in a Hanzo. Uh, this does not scream they're going to play close to the door. This screams they're going to play long range, play on the high ground. And what they try and do is make it difficult for the Valiant to get up the street, right? Uh, when you have the double shield, you're constantly breaking it with your own double shield plus the Hanzo in the mix. Uh, but I think the, with, with the position that they're in, though, they can't really afford to do this, I feel like. I want Diva for McGravy here. I, I think he can get away with, with playing it here. I mean, McGravy, by the way, last round was absolutely everywhere. Uh, he himself ends around with seven final blows and three deaths. Not always as easy to notice uh, sometimes, but he looked incredible. See, might just be double shield here from he and Dreamer, but it's double snipers. So having the diva to access here and to pressure either of these two down probably doesn't hurt. Another shield is just going to get shot to bits. So you're, you're not, you don't even really have to play the diva because what'll happen is you'll be able to hide behind this cart, and because of where the payload gets to, you, they're going to have to drop anyway, right? Uh, and then that's where. Moved. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, you see them already giving up high ground. Because uh, there's nothing you can really do here. Uh, and then this is where once they go to the low ground, KSF can get a hack, you can burn somebody down, you can put pressure, and that, that's it. I mean, look at the gladiators in this position, right? Like, you may get one fight uh, in this half, uh, which is asking a lot. You feel like they should have played close, right, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. We've got two fights, and now it's only going to be the one. Storm Arrow's there to try and whittle away Dreamer's barrier. Discord all there on Kepster means he has to be careful, but he gets enough damage on KSF there to force his recall. Dreamer's down, so the Gladiators hold their ground for the time being. Birdring would love access to the high ground once more, but there are a lot of individuals that have other plans for it. Yeah, now it just creates like a weird case for him. Like, where does he go? He can't kind of peek the Widow inside of the cafe there. Then he knows that the hypersphere's from McGravy are up here on the high ground. Knows most likely another player here. Uh, I feel for the gladiators that if you know the push starts to come from this side where McGravy's coming through, and then you get pressure on the front side of the cart, uh, it could be difficult to watch both angles. That'll be a nice storm arrow from Birdring on the KSF, but you lose Kempster and Shaz. So much pressure on Kempster though, Matt. That was why the Zip was grouping up a little bit with the Sigma to try and get rid of him, but Birdring's having to do with rain from the high ground. KSP, another shot. Finds third ring, but the Valiant I haven't really progressed any further now. Yes, it's the odd pickoff from KSP. Yes, that's nice, but 
They need presence on the card. They need to start moving it. Getting rid of with the enemy Widowmaker is not quite enough. So coming into the next fight for the Valiant, nothing really in terms of ultimates. You're probably looking at another fight to try and build something up. Uh, maybe a Halt plus Dragon Strike combination for the Gladiators on the cart. You'll try and save your Amp Matrix, your Infrasight, and Supercharger for later in the game. All right, low mobility means it's tough to get away from the Dragon Strike, especially when there's a Halt accretion. Somehow McGravy is kept alive by his backline. Nicely done by Rain, but Dreamer. The Discord Orb on him is picked off by Mira. Creason doesn't hit space, able to dodge to one from McGrady. Burdering's gone down to Lastro. So the Valiant now can keep applying a bit more pressure, but there's still a sniper at large, and the Valiant, they get rid of one of these snipers, Matt, but the other seems to bother them midway into the fight. Yeah, just finding these off angles and being able to put down a ton of damage. But this next fight though, Mitch, this is the one that the Valiant have really been playing for. They come in with five ultimates on the board. Most likely you'll get a supercharger out of this as well. Walls for KSP. This will bring out the walls from Kevser. So you maybe wait this out for both teams as uh, Kevser trying to get an eye on where KSF's coming from with his EMP. I mean, that's huge, right? Knowing where the Sopra's coming from, it's still KSF harassing Kepsa down. While Kepsa is doing this, he's not shooting other heads. That's a problem. KSF doesn't even need to find a kill now. Gravitic Flux goes on towards base. He's dropped to the ground, and the immortality kill from here has already gone down. Dreamer trying to get work done. He's pushing the card up and throws the supercharger. This is going to require a transcendence from the Gladiators, but they've already lost OG. And KSF strikes second. He gets the EMP, and an easy finish off on Shaz. The players favor the Valiant now, and Mira has to step down from the Ivory Tower and contest. He cut down almost instantly, and a Discord Orb makes short work of Bird Ring as well. We didn't see much of Havana, but we didn't have to. The Los Angeles Valiant tie things up without having to capture a point. Yeah, the Gladiators put together a good defense, uh, though. Su I would say surprisingly, judging with how far away they played with that Widow Hanzo setup. Uh, but they made it work. The difficult part is once the Valiant got a ton of those ultimates, uh, you block off lots of angles that the snipers can attack from. It makes it much harder to win the game, uh, where what you saw at the end, the Valiants with all their ultimates just pushed it over the line. A lot of high-flying work from the snipers on both sides, but the front lines of these teams look very good. McGravy ends with eight kills, uh, five deaths, and OG is seven and four, respectively. So now we head into half time. It is a tied series, ladies and gentlemen. Stick around. Let's hear what the experts have to say at the watch point game break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
The Battle for LA is living up to expectations as we're tied one to one in our game breaks presented by Cheese It Grooves. I'm once more joined by Custa and the ever loving CP. I don't know why, but I just wanted to highlight how loving you are, CP. Uh, obviously, going into this matchup, we highlighted the hit scan duel. And on Nepal, we like to talk a lot about Bird Ring, but for the most part, uh, or KSP rather, but for the most part, it was Bird Ring popping off on Nepal. Yeah, and I mean, that was the story of map one, of course, here in our crunch time. And look, we talked about it in the setup. KSP, a huge hero for the Valiant, but Bird Ring has been on a resurgence and then some. Something that the Gladiators were hoping would be the case all season long. But now it's come to bear, and there's no better example than what happened here on Nepal, where it just feels like anything Bird Ring did worked out well, right place, right time and then when you get to the ash here on round two it is simply disgusting this entire exchange towards the end where the valiant go hey maybe we'll be able to do something get back to this fight no 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 bird ring just completely shutting them down with precision and this is funny because it's what the valiant rely on ksp to do on the other end but bird ring was just a step above Yes, and that was obviously our crunch time presented by Cheesy Grooves. CP's weak glasses just threw me off. No, CP weak glasses, you just hit different. Uh, love to see it, so that threw me off for a little bit. But yes, that was yeah. our crunch time presented by Cheesy Grooves. And heading into map two, what stood out for me, Scott, was actually that the Valiant opted for a faster Lucio Moira defense here that really changed the pace of the game, Scott. Yeah, I think you're seeing a lot of adaptation to each map that's really working for each of these teams. In map one, we saw the Gladiators play the Reaper, and on map two, we saw the you know, Valiant go for this spawn camp with this May that got a ton of success. And I think we talk about the hit scan duel. By playing this aggressive style, the Valiant sort of gave KSP a lot of freedom that he didn't have in that first map. And that's why you saw him sort of take over a little bit and really got a lot of value. This could have gone either way, though. The Gladiators almost did the exact same thing on their own defense with this, you know, double sniper setup that we've been seeing from them. Almost got the thing. I think if they can find a way to shut down KSP consistently like they did on their defense, I think this is definitely the win condition for this Gladiators roster. Now, our third map of the series is going to be King's Row. And I mean, this is really where it's crunch time presented by Cheese the Cruz as well. The last crunch time of the entire regular season. We're heading into King's Row. And what are we really expecting from these two teams here on King's Row? Because we have seen a lot of Widowmaker in the past. We haven't seen as much Reinhardt. We have seen Dreamer bring it out as occasionally OG as well. But Scott, what are you really looking for from both of these teams heading into King's Row? I'm really interested to see if we're going to see them go towards these Junkrat compositions. There's been, to, seems to have been a lot of leaning towards the, just playing the Winston dive style, even on King's Row, because it has so many narrow chokeways that the Sombra and the Ash get so much value, and it's kind of hard to play this shield style of gameplay. So I'm interested to see how that is going to adapt, because both the t these teams, as I've said, have been coming up with all these interesting compositions. I'm, I'm going to be interested to see if they pull out something unique as well, because from both of these teams, we have seen some crazy stuff over the history of King's Row. Yeah, and so I now, think anytime you have the battle for LA, things are just, they're chaotic. Also, I had no idea. Go ahead, Jack. No, i just like to say, of yeah. course, that we have the opportunity here to swap picks around going into King's Row, because I know that all of us predicted the Valiant to win the battle for LA, but things have obviously changed with Birding popping off as well, Ooh. and as we're heading into King's Row. I'm going to ask the both of you, but starting with you, CP, would you like to change your Valiant pick to the Gladiators? Ah, oh, would I like to change the Valiant pick to the Gladiators? I mean, first off, is that even loud? That's question number one. I feel like it's not. I feel like I'm locked in, and this is just sort of the honor Johnny's pick. the host. And if honor is at stake within this moment where I've locked in the Valiant officially no matter what, I got to stay the course <laughs> and say the Valiant are going to take it because, you know, in the worst case scenario would be I change my pick, and then I lose my honor, and somehow it gets stripped. Like, no, I, I, I'm not going to go back on it. I have to stay at the Valiant, even though part of me does think the Gladiators are a little bit ahead. Scott? My, heart, my heart's in the Valiant. They could have got 2-0 swept in the first half and I would never change my pick. Yeah, he's just full bias at this point. But I actually think the Valiant look good. If they can find a way to get KSP open, I think they'll shut down the Gladiators. Well, I don't want to be the one who loses to Costa in the prediction leaderboard Do by it. swapping my pick in the very last Do game it. break of the Do regular it. season. It's not Do happening, it. Scott. Do Stop it! it. <laughs> I've already I've already messed up the game break presented by Cheesy Crew, so now we might as well not mess it up any further, okay? It's time to head over to King's Row in the battle for LA. Uh, with our commentators, of course, it's going to be Uber and Mr. X.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. Welcome back from your game break, ladies and gentlemen. We're back here at the Overwatch League's final match for the regular season of 2020. It's crazy. What a journey. Uh, but there's still much road to be traveled here in this series between the Gladiators and the Valiant. That's right. Just join us. Classic battle for LA to cap things off. But we saw Birdering look very, very strong early on in this series, Matt. The Valiant, it's a close Havana. They, they squeak out a map win yeah. there and we're tied up after the break. I just really don't like the composition that the Gladiators play on Havana. Like, I, I think if they play closer to the door and uh, on defense specifically, maybe they're able to make something happen. Uh, where they, they did play a pretty good defense for what it was worth, but just giving themselves only like one, two fights in the situation they were is very difficult. Uh, we do have a sub. We have Big Goose coming back in here uh, for Mir. So this tells you potentially want to play some Lucio here on King's Row. Yeah, I felt like the composition for the Gladiators was supposed to give a bunch of space and then use uh, the Cold Sack at just outside of point eight, right? To get the most value out of their double snipers eventually. It putted out, but both teams were fairly close. It was uh, it was almost an overtime finish, right, for the Valiant. So King's Row uh, should show us something a little bit different from that. Don't know if the double sniper setup is going to be nearly as viable. Uh, we've seen teams play double shield here. We've seen teams attempt to play the dive and... 
I am. I will be curious to see this in the Valiant, right? Uh, we don't see that many teams opt to play like a, a, a double dive tank based defense <laughs> here, just because it's kind of hard. It's it's pretty risky. And if uh, you know the Gladiators on offense, they play like a, a Lucio Batiste with Reinhardt. Maybe they use the Diva for high ground control. You know, they might have a more robust composition on paper to attack point A. Yeah, I think uh, you, you um, on saying that you bring in Big Goose here to play the Mercy again, right? You get the Mercy pocket going on, whether it be a, a Bird Ring or Kevster on one of the hit scan rolls, or maybe both of them uh, kind of alternating between the two. And then the Valiant on defense uh, now. Uh, looks like they'll be playing the Mercy with uh, KSP on the Ash and the KSF on the Sombra. So uh, this, is, this is kind of what we've been seeing from the Valiant over the last uh, you know, few games in this hero pool. Uh, I like the Ash Sombra look. I think when Sombra is good and effective, you should always kind of bring her into the lineup, right? EMP is just so devastating. Same with Hack. Uh, Gladiators here at the start. Maybe they're just trying to like manufacture a pick with that uh, Bird Ring coming out on Ash and then Kempster kind of peeking on the Widow. Maybe they'll switch off of this though. Let's see. Do you play, they play Ash Widow here? No, they'll, they'll play Sombra Ash here. And they have a symmetric TP, and that would be theoretically to avoid, you know, like a defensive widow getting an early pick as they push out a spawn. Still, KSF has already uh, gotten into the back line of the Gladiators as they try and set up for a push. And Kevster is on the hunt now. For what exactly? We're not sure. The murdering has just let him off the chain, and he's going to cause problems. Almost yeah. takes care of KSP in one hit. Lucky both players have mercy pockets. OG's down, has to be resurrected here, man. Yeah, it looks like he potentially either got uh, slept or hit with a biotic grenade and then hacked as well. And they try and stay in, go for some more kills. They lose KSF as you see space going in deep. He'll take out Dreamer as well. Dreamer's able to get an extra kill there as he backs away, chased down by space. But this is anything but clean, right? Space and Kempster are sat there. There's still high ground control for the Valiant. Not one for him yet for the Gladiators. Kempster has to reveal himself to contest. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't look great. Probably doesn't feel good for him either as he tries to go back for a health pack and is removed. Space is able to get received re of those. So there is a silver lining for the Gladiators who are still trying to keep the pressure up. Well, Kessler went to go hack the health pack uh, to give it to him and Space. And KSF just popped up right on top of it and interrupted the hack and then they were able to take out Kessler. But the res comes in. It's been a, a little bit chaotic at the beginning of this round on King's Row. As Gladiators have played fast and loose. KSP. Safe positioning for him. A lot of early damage in there, and his chance goes down. That was Dreamer on the follow up. Wayne's definitely paid by KSF, and now Dreamer gets to have a little bit of fun. Yeah, Dreamer looks like, uh, I don't know, some sort of modern arm that I really wouldn't spend any money on, but people are kind of weird these days with that. Gravy has a self destruct here, and Ozio takes on the high ground. Should be enough healing here, but Rain is actually the one focused down right now. OG goes down to a bob that was used on the point. Yeah, the bob goes down to contest, and when OG is trying to just get out of harm's way, the bob just puts a few shots and takes him out. But another res comes in, though, uh, for the Gladiators, as the Gladiators probably want to try and get a fight on the point, an EMP of their own, but that'll be KSF with an EMP early. Nano boost here on a Dreamer. The Valiant are cleaning up now. Dreamer has to be careful. Chats can cause him problems. That is a hack health pack, and they're just trying to keep him away from it. Dreamer almost losing a 1v1 to it. And Ana uh, has to use his shield rather creatively to make sure he doesn't get violent grenaded in the process. The Valiant are still in control, Matt. It's about a minute and 15 seconds left in the round. And it's now up to the Gladiators to secure a really effective EMP coverage. I was going to say, watch if this EMP comes down for the Gladiators. Potentially you get like a Bob to the point and then a self-destruct from a Gravy uh, to knock people off. See how they play this. This will be Bob sent in for both teams here early on. The hack on Shad there, so a little bit less healing. No Bionic Grenade or Sling possible. Space goes deep there, and he's going to have to go for a resuit. He's happy with that. He's created a lot of space on the court itself. Now he's going to turn his attention back towards McGravy, who gets hit by a defensive Bionic Grenade from Lastro, who, by the way, has a Nano Boost available. Both artists have those ultimates. Dreamer gets the Valiant Nano Boost, and OG gets his. Two electric monkeys running wild. The bird ring goes down, so KSP is the only Ash alive presently. Oh, and, and beautiful positioning there from Dreamer to get right in between the Mercy and the Ash. So the Mercy has a very difficult time getting out of harm's way. But McGravy holds on to the self-destruct all throughout. This KSF, he'll have another EMP. You may with the way that KSP plays. 
get another Bob, but it's looking like the Valiant's gonna get a hold. Oh, the headshot on the Shaz. That's a four-player EMP. Burdering goes down to the self-destruct. Beautiful defense from the Valiant. Nice. Hits your perfect execution, man. Starts off with just a stunning headshot from KSP on arguably the most important target in that fight. Then a four-player EMP in the self-destruct combo. Now for the Valiant, it's a matter of just putting a ribbon on it and sending it off. She's about done. And that'll be a very convincing defensive hold on Kings Row. Something we just don't tend to see at all between teams that on paper look evenly matched. The Valiant make a very strong statement here, and map three is one they have their eyes set on. Well, something that we haven't seen from the Gladiators uh, from uh, really uh, outside of that map one was the pressure on to KSP, right? Uh, map number one, OG in space were able to get into the back line. They were able to control the point, which then they also kind of push up control the sight lines. Uh, since then, when we went over to Havana, right, uh, the Valiant able to break on through with a lot of uh, nice kills from KSP. And then that time when he's playing the Ash up on the high ground, uh, he's pretty much free there the entire time. Like takes a few shots from Bird Ring, right, but uh, knows not to overstay the angles, like risk the chance of getting uh, you know, double uh, double shot by bird ring with the damage boost taken out. So uh, if you're gonna allow, we've seen this with a bunch of teams, you're gonna allow KSP that type of space and give him time to set up and get these angles. Eventually he's gonna break your setup, break your team. Uh, we'll see if the gladiators can put together a good defensive hold here though, uh, on their end. KSP here uh, towards the end of that round. Look at that sleep dart. I mean, this is why he has so much space. Now, if that Winston isn't sleeping, KSP doesn't just casually take Bird Ring's head off. In fact, yeah. he probably dies there. So, got a lot, a lot of love for the Valiant's tanks and supports right now. Especially Dreamer, by the way. Just, I don't know how he survives in some of those situations. He had an unbelievable round with eight final blows and two deaths, only beaten by KSP's nine and zero. The Valiant are fired up right now. And all they're going to do is get just a little bit more than one tick on this point, and they're going to come out with the Ash and the Sopra up against the Widow for Bird Ring. And, and no, uh, no Mercy in play for the Gladiators. They'll go with Lucio Batiste, so... They're playing double shield, so... Maybe why? Oh, this could be bad for Kempton. Did he translocate? Here he did, he can't get away! Yeah. Dreamer catches him and that is a nightmare beginning for the Los Angeles Gladiators now. They're missing their Sombra, which means that KSP is gonna have much more freedom now to set up wherever he pleases. And the pressure starts to mount. Dreamer heads to the high ground and forces Bird Ring out of position and KSP is looking very safe here. Coach guns himself away from the scrutiny of space, but that Sigma Shield is down. He's got to resort to the kinetic grasp now. And desperately, the reinforcements are, are flooding in for the Gladiators. Getting rid of Dream is a good start, but Los Angeles have lost Bird Ring. Uh, right, they lose Bird Ring. See OG just trying to get the shields out in front of KSP. Same with space. They're just putting so many different... I know, pressure on him from different angles, but still, no reason to panic if you're the Valiant, right? Dynamite damage here. On OG, Dreamer will push up. You just need 40, about 45% on the point to win the round, so win the map. 44.9, you're dead right, Matt. The Valiant almost got themselves the one tick, but look at them just slowly easing into position. They lose KSP here. But he's brought back into the fight. Okay, Big Goose almost gets caught out there. That is a very nice accretion from Space to keep his Lucio alive. But Dreamer has a primal rate. He can now stick to these targets. Burry's gonna jump out of the window in the enemy territory now. And it looks like he'll be focused down by Dreamer. There was no real escape for him anyway. Not, not anything that was good. And oh, he knocks him out of the immortality field. Dreamer, what a monster! Sound barrier in desperation from the Gladiators and nothing more than that. Completely dismantled by the Monkey Magician. <laughs> Nicely done by Dreamer and the Valiant take their second map. And even with the sound barrier there at the end, if you would have used it earlier, if you're Big Goose, they have an EMP to remove all the shielding from it. Uh, so not able to get uh, what would have been a, a very impressive hold there uh, is the Gladiators. So now they, they find themselves down in a match point to the Valiant uh, where uh, I, I, you have to, I think, kind of answer the aggression that the Valiant's putting on. Like we saw from Dreamer's POV, right? Like getting up to the high ground, trying to deny that space for Bird Ring. And what it does, uh, when the Gladiators are on offense, they're not creating those type of plays for Bird Ring. Uh, you know, to, to have some more space and have a little bit less pressure on taking that you know, Widow or Ash 1v1.
I like I cannot believe it. Dreamer ends up eclipsing our KSP in that map through a 12 final blows, three deaths. <laughs> he's playing Winston against <laughs> yeah. double shield, right? So no, it's no mean feat. And he's able to triumph in such a big way. That's gotta be filling the Valiant sails full of nice wind. Let's see if it blows him in the right direction in map four, which is just around the corner. Stay tuned, more of this battle for LA coming up. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. Welcome back, everybody, and it is a little uncommon to see such competitive series actually be very short, but two maps yeah. in quick succession, we have only seen the first part of. First, it was Havana. Oh, Neither yeah, team uh, got to point A. The Valiant didn't have to. And the same on King's Row. The Valiant's defenses have been such that they have not had to complete much of the map at all to secure victory after these full holds. And it's going to be frustrating for the Gladiators now who probably feel like they don't get to show as much of what they would like to, especially after how good they looked after map one, Matt. Yeah, it's gonna, uh, that, that's a really good point. Considering of how uh, back and forth a lot of the fights have felt in this series, uh, all the maps have been kind of lopsided in a way, uh, in terms of we haven't really seen a lot uh, of the maps. Like, we haven't seen like really long maps. Like, we've seen, uh, what, like Havana pretty much the first point, King's Row first point, then two points on uh, map number one. So it's been a relatively fast series, but uh, for the next map, we do go to Temple of Anubis. So there is a chance we do get a little bit more of a drawn out map here as uh, Temple of Anubis uh, can play out like that assault just in general. Uh, but this is another map where the gladiators, they're going to have uh, the challenge of putting pressure on KSP. Dreamer doing a really nice job accessing the back line of the gladiators. I think that's really kind of made it difficult for the Gladiators to keep that pressure up. Uh, so we'll see if the Valiants are able to maintain that uh, aggressive play on offense, open up those angles for KSP, and how the Gladiators adapt. The Gladiators' sixth spot heading into playoffs hangs in the balance. The Los Angeles Valiant, they are playing with house money in the Rapper map. The Gladiators have to win the Temple of Anubis to have any chance of preventing themselves being leapfrogged by the Atlanta Reign. They're gonna need to show us something special here. Temple of Anubis, Matt. It's a map where we get a lot of these 
Winston, these diva compositions, it suits both of these teams very well. And ultimately, it may come down to how big these sleeps are from these honors and how large and in charge our DPS players are, especially the perennial duel between KSP and Birdring. He also forgot to mention that uh, because the Valiant uh, overperformed everybody's expectations, uh, but specifically Sideshow, that he has to shave the Valiant logo into his head. Uh, so uh, Uncle, How does he shave into his head? There's nothing so to he's, shave he, into. He, he, he's been letting it grow a little bit. He's been letting it grow a little bit. So so he, he's got some he's got some hair to turn into a Valiant logo. I Is that why he wore be... that honky tonk hat the other day? And well, yes, yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, the gladiators gotcha. on defense. Uh, it'll be a dive defense. Try and control the high ground. Uh, I like this decision not to kind of play slow at the show uh, at the bridge because most likely you would have seen the dive come out from the Valiant. And, kind of break that over time. So uh, also you see the Sombra on defense from the Gladiators too. So this is something that they didn't do on Havana. Uh, they did it on King's Row, but I, I like the decision coming in here on Anubis. Oh, look at this. Uh, the Valiant are able to pretty comfortably take all this space and OG got caught there. It looks like Shaz was able to get a quick, quick sleep dart on him. And he was immediately eliminated after that. And that really just guts the Gladiators now. With the playing composition, they doesn't recover really well when they lose their front lines or when things go wrong early. So you see the Gladiators, all oh, they push off the point. They're going to have to wait until OG comes back to have even the slightest chance of contesting this. And even then, you're walking into the sight lines of KSP. They do get KSF, who's playing very aggressive. So maybe they're able to make a play here towards the point to try and contest. They do get on it uh, with a few seconds left. The Valiant, they back out a little bit. I mean, that was incredible from a gravy, though. Really good presence of mind. He keeps the defense matrix on Dreamer there instead of trying to get extra damage on OG. That allows his main tank to get away. And now the Gladiators are trying to take this high ground control, but Dreamer has himself an Anabu. So does OG, though, again. The monkeys are lighting it up. Dreamer now. Oh, yeah, if he hits that punch, he can actually pretty much kill Biku straight away, but now it's going to be a little bit harder to catch him. Still, though, completely laser focused on getting rid of this Mercy. Much like King Kong was focused on his conquest. Dreamer now's gonna be able to drop down to the point. He thought the barrier would save him, but a dozen space takes him down with a self-destruct. But KSP all the while, Matt, is getting the crucial damage and the crucial frags. That's three on the trot for him. And that will be a Valiant point eight. I was going to say, it was actually really good uh, movement from Big Goose to kind of get away from Dreamer. We were on uh, board with Dreamer for a bit when he was using the Primal Rage, trying to pressure Big Goose uh, all the way out after they get the kill on a Shaz, but uh, not enough uh, from the Gladiators on their first point defense uh, to, to hold it for really uh, a really significant amount of time. As, uh, now let's see if they do much better on this point B. They oh, need to... Uh, I was going to say, they need to have a good point B defense. Uh, giving up the point fast here to the Valiant, uh, it'll just be backbreaking. Kepta got hacked by KSF. He couldn't translocate away, and he gets picked off. OG's hit with a bionic grenade, and everything once more is going wrong for the Gladiators. I feel like a broken record saying that again, but it's been calamitous circumstances, one after another, for the Gladiators. Now they need to claw this back. OG's brought back into the fight, but Gravy has gone down with another big bionic grenade. Connects from Lastro. Fortunately, Kepster triumphantly returns with a big EMP on the McGravy Dreamer and Lastro, and is able to get the Gladiators back into the fight. And they had to use everything there, though, right? You had to use Bob, EMP, Valkyrie, uh, just to keep that going. And all, you have to use all of that just off of the first pick that they get on the Kepster. So now the Valiant will come in. They'll have Valkyrie. They'll have uh, Self Destruct, Primal Rage. You'll have Bob. Uh, a lot to work with for the LA Valiant. Is, uh, you see how dangerous this Ash 1v1 is. You know, you take one shot, you go down to uh, pretty much like 2 HP, it feels like. Bob charges to the point, already takes half his health and damage before he gets there, but still almost gets a tick for his team. Last throw is brought back in the fight. We have a 6v6. Don't be fooled by Bob on the kill feed. And Ojin's Primal Rage, he just looks to try and isolate KSP here. He looks reluctant to use it unless he really has to. Yeah, I think you want to hold on to this in case you have to stall for a bit if you're OG. Uh, with how dangerous things have been going on defense. Uh, you see a hack here from Kempster, they're trying to set up a dive. Now, Rain is actually the one that goes down though, so Lastro would be far behind. And a little thing that OG just showed us there was a little peek out just to bait the sleep dart. He knew that, uh, that Lastro will be switched on and looking to punish him if he got too aggressive. That, however, uh, is maybe slightly too aggressive. Fortunately, KSP will be coming back from sport. 
It's fine though. By the time that uh, OG gets back in the fight, the Valiants still have to wait for everybody uh, to come back. See what KSF decides to do here with his EMP is they had space a little bit low, nowhere near, uh, you know, dangerous territory is. The Valiant now trying to set up as six. Uh, they're going to be walking into an EMP from Kevster though. KSF there was hoping to hack Kevster and make it impossible for him to escape, but that's a four player EMP. The Gravy gets out of the mech, sends herself destruct in, but is killed before he can climb back in. And that'll be the fight already over. The Valley here will maybe see what they can get on the back side of it, but not really much for them here as they're sent packing once more. Yeah, now the Gladiators are starting to get rolling. Uh, playing aggressive, pushing up, you know, taking a lot of this space. Uh, we've gotten the clock down uh, to about a minute and 45 seconds, so looking good for the Gladiators here on point B defense. Definitely have come alive after giving up that point A. Double support ults for the Gladiators, plus a Bob to contest. Uh, we'll see how the Valiant kind of forced them into position to get this EMP off. Well, EMP's there. OG Burnering and Shaz all get hit with a mat. Burnering doesn't have a chance to use Bob to try and contest, and it's almost one tick here for the Valiant. Dreamer is stuck to Shaz like Moss on a rock. He won't let him go, but the canny Shaz is able to dispense a nano boost over to OG before he eventually has to succumb to Dreamer's absolute willpower. Oh my god, the, guy, the way this guy moves around, it's crazy. Float like a butterfly, but when he gets to his target, he gets rid of him. Fortunately for the Valiant, haven't found enough of these kills in the fight. <laughs> oh, space. Able to clean Rain up and paves the way with the Bunny Blaster action. Yes, uh, so now the Valiant, they've come in. They've pretty much used all of their ultimates here, Mitch, with uh, 45 seconds on the clock. Just have a self-destruct. Maybe you're able to farm up like a, uh, a nano boost uh, by Lasher just kind of healing McGravy, going back to the spawn. Uh, but still, things do not look good for the Valiant here on their point B attack. The Gladiators have really stepped up to another level, and Lasher does end up farming that nano boost. EMP there. Kept to drop that one. Tried to get a finish off a of KSP, and OG and Space will finish the job that was begun. Nano boost here for Dreamer. It looks like the Valiant are a bit concerned about whether they can contest if they give this up. So they break KSP and they try and flip the switch. Tempo now behind the Valiant as they want to push in, but their front line is getting battered and bruised. The Gravy's desuited, needs to try and stay alive and give himself enough time to get into the mech and the hack on space is really going to help. If the Gravy can resuit, there could be something here for the Valiant. Dreamer is so close to Primal Raid, but he's hacked for the moment. The Gravy's trying to stay alive and Birdering's looking for his next victim. The high ground is KS. Piece, but he wasn't ready for Burgering to pick it from the back corner. The Gravy, he does get back into the mech, and Dreamer has another Primal Rage here. He's hit with an Nano Boost, and the Sleep Dart goes awry. That's for can't connect with Burgering, who now is a bomb available for this fight. But it's the EMP! OG and Space are hit with that one, and the mech is hit with a Biotic Grenade. No healing for Space, and Dreamer gets rid of Burgering now. Back onto the point, and catches his load, but Bob is trying to help him out. Dreamer eventually falls, and who is going to stand on the point to the Valiant? Gonna be tough. One and a half ticks for Los Angeles, the blue and yellow one. And they're unable to finish a messy fight. The bird ring getting rid of KSP early makes a big difference, Matt. Oh, absolutely, because he had control of that choke, right? You know, KSP was set up on the high ground. We saw bird ring trying to take one of those angles coming out of the left-hand spawn door on the defensive side. And with the Mercy damage boost, able to take him out. That's a huge pick for the Gladiators. Uh, if you're a Valiant fan, fortunately, you did take 53% of point two, where it looked like it was not good at all for the LA Valiant. It looked like they were not going to make any progress on point B. Getting 53% uh, st is definitely obviously better than get getting nothing. So being able to battle back in that final fight, get 53% is huge for the Valiant. But the Gladiators really coming alive on defense there. And it's really the tanks again that are making waves. Space looks incredible in that round. Nine final blows, four deaths, and uh, he's uh, second in terms of overall damage for his team. Both he and Spacer are, are really getting involved in a lot of these fights. We'll see how they self-destruct. Now, this is the one that Dreamer tried to thought he could bubble. He thought he's safe yeah. in this one, but no. Oh, it doesn't right go on the through outside. the door. Yeah. It kind of clips that corner and slides down. And I think it was, it was typed in chat. I think someone said 9,000 IQ bomb. Yeah. Uh, to space there. But Dreamer was not ready for... It to bounce off the door frame like that. Do they play intentional or not? Shield Matt, here? we'll never know. So Valiant with a, a pretty standard defense. Gladiators on offense. Are they going to play double shield McCree? So this is very brawly, right? 
uh, double shield McCree uh, with a Lucio in place to kind of get this composition in position. Uh, but this is one that wants like Dreamer to come in and spend a lot of time, you know, on the tanks and just get punished with like a halt, accretion, flashbang setup. Well, the Gladiators take a lot of ground here. The Valiant have to be the ones that sort of assess the situation before diving in. Murdering wants to pressure Dreamer. Just make it hard for him to get into the fight with anything uh, more than half of his health. KSF getting picked off when he did, though, was a pretty nasty blow to the Valiant. A biotic grenade from Nastro looked good, but it hardly slows the Gladiators down, and they've already moved to the point here. Again, these uh, rather risky compositions, losing a player in this dive defense is devastating. And the Valiant have to breathe for a moment. Yeah, it'll be a nano boost. They are waiting till Lasho got the nano boost, then throwing it on Dreamer as Bergeron goes to the flank, tries to get one. He gets taken out. Two kills here for the Valiant. Thing out Bergeron and Big Goose. And uh, here, here's what's dangerous is you don't have... So with the McCree in play, yes. You can play Brawly in this close quarter, like mid-range engagements, but when it goes to long range, KSP has such a big advantage. So he needs to be able to put down a lot of damage as the Gladiators are coming in, and that would allow his tanks to play a little bit more aggressive to try and finish off some of those kills. I mean, Birdering has his work cut out from here. If he wants to try and be aggressive and be a playmaker against the Valiant, uh, you know, who has McGrady, who is everywhere or once. He has this sort of omniscience that is very hard to sneak anything into his back line without him knowing about it. The Birdering now for the time being tries to repel Dreamer. Deadeye. Look at this. I mean, straight in his face is McGrady. There's no respect. Gets rid of Birdering and uh, the Deadeye is completely shut down. And the Gladiators end up using their EMP there. They, they thought that the Valiant were pushed up far enough that they could punish them with it. Uh, but all it did was get McGravy demacked. Uh, that's where that hack comes from. It comes from the EMP. So EMP Deadeye invested there uh, for the Gladiators, where KSP just threw his Bob in. Bob plus Primal Rage. Uh, but now you'll have another nano boost for the Valiant. You'll have Valkyrie and an EMP here when they come through the choke. But EMP you could hold on to to just deter Big Goose from ever using the sound barrier. But this is the Valiant. They're picking fights with the Gladiators in areas that are possibly the worst for attacking teams to fight in. Their line of sight is awful. They get sort of jumped off from above. And look at this again. That's Immortality huge. Field is there. The Dreamer just breaks line of sight. He's got a nano boost as well. He just dives on in. And it's an after massacre! A supercharger plus ant matrix used there for the gladiators. And as soon as that comes in, they nano Dreamer and then KSF just uses EMP, takes all of that away on the bridge. And now you'll have a primal rage available for Dreamer here, self-destruct from a gravy. The gladiators, you may have to use like sound barrier to keep players alive as they kind of come through the choke. Oh, that's big, big hack. big hack there, yeah. Now, Rain does have Valkyrie and can resurrect, but if you see this face, eyeballs him across the map and throws him into the blender. The Gravitic Flux catches the Mercy and Rain can't escape. 30 seconds are left in the round now. Yeah, Rain and Biotic Grenade catches Birdry. Not a ton of the health pack yet, buddy. Just wait. And it should be a capture here for the Gladiators. They do it right. It looks very simple <laughs> when you put it yeah, like that. Right? Kepster knows Dream is going to drop down. And he uses that information to, I guess, shut down the Winston before he can do anything. Yeah, and they don't really have to use much of anything, right? The Gravitic Flux to be able to connect with Rain, take him out of uh, the game while he's going for a res. But Kepster has the ability to hit an EMP, EMP Deadeye uh, combination here. All right, OG, a little bit low on health here. Sound barrier, looks like the Gladiators wanted to use that. Mortality build for Shad. Burnering going up against uh, Target, very much out of his weight class. He's still able to prevail, though, look at the Deadeye. Flashbang there. Surprised he even knows what's going on right now, but it's Dreamer in his face with Nana Boost, and Birdery has to respect this. He backs up around the corner, but Shaz won't be allowed to escape. And again, the defensive dive from the Valiant strikes true. The Gladiators have to pack it up once more. All right, so the, the, the Gladiators, they, that's their first attempt, right? They probably have, uh, you know, a handful of them left to try and get that 55%. Uh, do they stay on this composition? I think that's kind of your question if you're the Gladiators. Do you want to continue to play like this double shield mid-range comp? So uh, KSP up on the high ground. He's able to get some damage on I mean, look at OG's health bar, and that'll be a five-player EMP that comes through from the Valiant. They get really aggressive, and it's going to be a counter EMP here from Kevster 
as everybody I mean, from the gliders being kept alive. Nerves of steel from Shat. He wasn't hacked by the initial EMP, but he still holds off the immortality field until it was required, and the timing was beautiful. The gladiators get immortality field, then their EMP strikes, and they stay alive in this series. Another battle for LA that delivers. Can't complain about that. Yeah, as the EMP from KSF is good and the Valiants decide to go in, uh, it, it ke doesn't connect with Kevser and Shaz as well, able to get down the Immortality Field and Amp Matrix to keep people up. Uh, the counter EMP is great there, and then they just march their way onto the point and take that 50%. So a uh, really nice play from the Gladiators there to force this game five. Chaz has to have ult-tracked that EMP coming. And that's why he Absolutely, knows yeah. that he cannot use that immortality field, otherwise it'll get switched off by an EMP. So he, he does exactly what he would do with Zenyatta. Stay out of light of sight, wait for the EMP, and strike and keep your team alive. Perfect response. It's almost like the, the gladiators woke up and uh, achieved some sort of psychic transcendence in the last <laughs> couple team fights of the map. Hey, better late than never, Matt. It keeps them alive in this series. And this battle for LA, the ninth of its kind, will go to a map number five. Stick around after the break. It all comes to a head here on the Overwatch League. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Out of nine times that we've had the Battle of LA so far in history of the Overwatch League, five times now it will have gone to a <laughs> decider map. That's right. The, Gladi the Gladiators and the Valiant have gone all the way. and We have another map five lined up for you. And again, this was a map type that the Gladiators looked very good on at the start of the series. They have a 61.3% win rate on it to, uh, I think the Valiant's 53% coming into the weekend. So this is definitely where they are the most comfortable and it's going to be up to the Valiant here to slow the momentum down after a successful a Temple of Anubis from the Gladiators, map. Yeah, I think you really kind of have to like the Gladiators potentially in this game five with all the stats you said and then how they looked specifically in map number one uh, against the Valiant on control. I think you definitely have to say the Gladiators, you know, have the slight edge going into this game five. Now remember, the Gladiators have to play in the knockout rounds in the playoffs, but a win here means that they will get the first selection of opponent to guarantee themselves a smoother way through. They cannot advance any further up than sixth, but losing this series 
but likely have them drop below the Atlanta rain. Something they uh, probably don't want to have to deal with. So Li Shang Tower is where it's all going to be happening. The final stage for this final battle for LA and this final match of the regular season in 2020. What a way to finish it, Matt! <laughs> And I, I wonder what the gladiators do they do they kind of go with this again, right? We saw them do this on map number one with the Reaper plus Sombra in play. That uh, let, let's say if the Valiant came out and ran like a Fara, they'd be in a little bit of trouble because all you have is like the Sombra hack with like a space play the Diva getting in the the Fara's face. But I think if you're the gladiators, you're gonna have to bank on them running this Sombra Ash like they've done the whole time, right? Uh, I mean, really, we only saw the variation from the Valiant in map number one. So I think until you see something different, you kind of have to play uh, to this. Yeah, so the Valiant, go, they go with the Ash as expected. The Gladiators, they can play aggressive and just try and get in their face with this Reaper. Try and get Birdring in a position to burn down these tanks. OG with the early dive, but hardly looked like he put a scratch on the Valiant. Bit of ego death for Birdring, having to switch off of Ash to the Reaper. But the Reaper makes it so much scarier for someone like the Graveyard Dreamer to try and get into the back line of the Gladiators. An extra layer of defense for blue and uh, the purple and white. And the Gladiators are going to move back to the point here. We'll have that early cap and they're being healed up by Shaz here. OG, a little bit careful he has to be. Shaz is hit with a body grenade, but this is what Birdman does best. He gets around the map and takes you by surprise. You see, I, I, I don't know if it's uh, as much as kind of like birdering putting aside like an ego thing, right? I, I think the strategy, uh, especially on control, is uh, one that they think the gladiators can probably execute much better than trying to mirror because like now when the gladiators, they send their tanks in and then the Valiant try and counter time, there's a Reaper there uh, waiting for that to come through. Oh, that, oh I thought he was going to get knocked in the hole with the hack that comes through from Kevster in the boot, but a Dreamer able to stay alive. That Nano gets nothing, completely shut down his Dreamer, and now Oji gets his chance to step up and do some damage. The Gravy realizes the uh, player in front of him is very well charged up. Oji's put to sleep, then he's hacked, then he's set back to spawn. The Valiant finally responds here. They throw everything at the Gladiators and it sticks. Sure enough, the Valiant are able to capture the point, but they only give up 51% to the Gladiators. Yeah, and you know that EMP comes through, so if you're the Gladiators, if you wanted to, you could even, like, engage with Sound Barrier, right? Just try and run yep. down the tanks. Yep, so Speed Kevster. the Reaper into the, the, the yep. enemy front line. It's uh, Kevster with the EMP, right? Could even, he may not even need Sound Barrier, right? Just take away their movement abilities and just speed the Reaper in. He almost got revealed there. He's able to run across just as Begravy stops firing, which is insane. That's the EMP. Both frontline at the hit, and Dreamer is hacked right now. So if he gets knocked off the edge, he won't be able to jump back to safety. That's why he's playing so passively. But Birdring lines him up and knocks him over. Two kills for the Reaper here. And the Gladiators, very comfortable start to the fight for them. Set up well by Kevster. Yeah, Kevster with the EMP, and then they ended up uh, using the sound barrier and engaging, like I had mentioned. I, I believe uh, it comes a little bit late, though, because Big Goose does get hacked at the beginning of the fight by KSF, because he imagines that coming. Uh, you have, like, Nano Winston or Nano Reaper in play here, uh, potentially. The Valiant, they have the same type of action they had before. You get to the bobs at the point, try and get KSP on an off angle. OG already on the way out there, as Jazz was thinking about giving him the Nano Boost. He'll wait and go for it now. Keeps Big Goose standing, and Birdwing's trying to get in McGravy's face. He's doused her with the Mighty Grenade, and ooh, can't break walk away. McGravy's able to catch him here, and it's a one-for-one one trade so far, but the Gladiators are still in control of the point, and OG is still healthy. McGravy's forced back. He's going to be extremely low, but he has to try and contest to maybe pressure out Chaz if he can, but eventually he falls. The Gladiators still have the numbers advantage now, and it's just getting worse for the Valiant. They're further and further behind, and now the Gladiators look to stop any interlopers from prolonging this round any longer than it has to. It looks like Dreamer potentially there just missed that, to jump that's, through the window. That's fine. Uh, not able to get back towards the point. Oh but I think you see some something there. We saw it a few times. You know, when they 
when they're able to get KSP and then they lose Bird Ring, like that is a trade First where uh, losing your the, like, Reaper uh, in exchange for the other teams Ash that you'll it. probably make every get day over the Gladiators, right? There. Bird ring ends up uh, it allows you then to just kind of play around OG in deaths. space, keep them alive. Uh, and we always saw them really healthy after going in towards that back line. Here's a replay of how that went down. Out. Reaper so tries to touch. Let's take a look here. Big Goose boot from Big Goose Ready to repel him. Kind of puts uh He's just waiting. He knows Reaper's going to come from eventually, so a timely boop is going to send him back over and get rid of him. Round two now is going to be on control center here. We we'll switch over towards our double shield. That's right. Bit of jump threat in the mix now for KSP and Bird Ring respectively. Bird Ring already gets the remote by kill on towards Rain. Picks him off and somehow by Blastro. Don't know how he intended to get that one, but the Gladiators now, it's full steam ahead. So much for shields up, the dispense of the defense. It's all offense, all the time. Yeah, they just come right in and just get bowled over by the Junkrat. Uh, so the Gladiators should be able to take the point here. First, early on, Space will get a kill on a KSP on the side. Uh, and now you can push up and control this choke if you're the Gladiators. Uh, and like you, you mentioned, obviously, the Gladiators are the higher win percentage on control. But even after winning map number one in the series, they, they've looked really good on this game type. So seeing them come in and kind of take it to the Valiant, not completely surprising. Bird Ring's got a nice little uh, off angle here. Can constantly pressure Ring Shields and healing resources. Almost goes down though to a right click from KSF. But as soon as he's healed, he's back in position. He's the aggressor and KSP can't hand up, hand up in the heat. Again, a rip tire available for Bird Ring now and even barriers thrown out by both Symmetras. So an interesting little uh, interaction now where both teams need to push uh, forward of each other's barriers, man. Oh yeah, it'll be a fight win though. Uh, for the Gladiators. Uh, the Symmetra barriers come down. Uh, it's kind of a, a mess for everybody, right? I mean, nobody kind of knows where they can shoot, where they can't. So the Gladiators will get another hold. Uh, Ant Matrix used, though, for the Gladiators during that for some extra damage, but uh, still with like 55% probably before we actually see another fight kick off. I know, what is this? A bird ring kind of has a tire. KSP is going around on like a flank. Let's see. Oh, well, you already get a tank oh, down here at the start. Oh, through the TP. That's that's spicy. I mean, you, you can't see a tire coming that way. It makes no. so much noise. No, usually you have some time to prepare for it, but there was no time for the Valiant to get ready for that. And they have not really had any time on this point. It is 75% out and counting. The Gladiators looking for their fourth consecutive battle for LA victory and secure the sixth seed to get the first choice of opponent in the knockout rounds. They're 15% away, Matt, and the Valiant have one fight left. Yeah, they have a tire. Uh, you're gonna have a Halt plus Gravitic Flux come out here early as they're trying to put a lot of pressure on a McGravy on the side and they're gonna get the kill on him. Where's KSP going with this tire? It's a little bit unclear. Still healthy enough, barrels it straight into the Gladiators, but they have an immortality field. McGravy is down. But the Valiant have taken the point, so the Gladiators probably make their way over now. Kinetic Grasp is required here by Space. His shield got chucked down, and again, Gladiators, it's full steam ahead. They're sending it. KSP's already picked off again by Bird Ring, who seems to have had his number in the jump rat head to head. The Supercharger, that Air Matrix thrown down, everything is there, and Bird Ring tries to go on a flank there. When he gets rid of Raven, it's a trade. Dream is able to find him. KSF throws up a barrier. Eventually he goes down. The Gladiator's looking pretty darn good in this one. Dreamer struggling. He's picked off on the high ground. I think Lastro is playing from, but he's struggling to keep his team alive. There's no one left to heal. And the Gladiators have the point. Only two more percent. The Valiant have to try and get a touch in an overtime. They send the Lucio in rain. Falls, but not in the way you thought it might. Dreamer trying to get to the point where the Symmetra Turrets just slow him up. This shield already broken down. McGravy has to fire strike to try and remove those sim turrets, but he's forced off of the point. And the Gladiators once more rule Los Angeles. And they get themselves first pick of opponent in our knockout rounds. So their control game looked great today. Uh, no, no, on some of the other game types, uh, whether it be because of compositions or just the Valiant's great play, they look kind of off. But on control, the Gladiators were just uh, too strong for the Valiant. I know lots of uh, different compositions, good uses of the ultimates out of the Gladiators. And uh, like you mentioned, getting this Game 5 win is huge for them to be able to pick that opponent. I mean, they'd be very pleased with the victory there, especially with how much they know that <laughs> critics have been rating uh, the Valiant as like a dark horse and outside chance going into the playoffs. Now the Gladiators get to hang. They have to play the extra game to get into uh, that second phase of the playoffs. 
But they may be happy for that. They get to choose their opponent. They get to, you know, secure a matchup against a team that they you know, they intrinsically feel like they're going to be stronger than. There's definitely a couple of definitely a couple of minnows that they could select. And they have an extra game under match conditions to prepare yeah. under our no hero pools environment. So uh, all looking good for the Gladiators and uh, the Rain looking on for forlornly as they, are, they now won't have that first choice of opponent, but they're also still well positioned going into playoffs, at least to cause some damage. Yeah, and if you're the Valiant, obviously it is a tough loss losing in the game five here to the Gladiators, but you've already had your spot, uh, knowing that fifth spot's kind of secured. Uh, right, so there wasn't a ton to play for, but uh, still, big win for the Gladiators. Uh, we were very impressed with the tank play across this series, uh, especially the Arna play, but uh, player of the match here, ultimately again, is going to be going over towards Birdring, whose Reaper definitely gave the Gladiators their shot at victory here. Without that, maybe these control maps don't look nearly as one-sided. Maybe uh, there's much more risk in dealing uh, with KSP's Ash. Saw Birdring also pop off on that same hero earlier on. He's continued to impress us. He'll continue winning these awards uh, as long as he continues to help his team get over the line in marquee matchups like this one. Uh, I mean, you can't feel better as a Gladiators fan with your star player on fire heading into playoffs. But yeah, I mean, if you're a Gladiators fan, right, the way you've seen Birdring play like the last like two, three weeks uh, has to be the, the best you've kind of felt all season long uh, watching him play. It's just been lights out, whether it's on the, the Ash, the Widow, uh, we see it on the Hanzo in certain occasions. But I know having him come in and play at this level going in the playoffs, we've seen a team that has had that type of play from Birdring in the past. Uh, and they went over to win it all, right? So just getting into the playoffs this season with everybody kind of having a shot. Uh, and seeing Bird Ring play like this is a huge sign for the Gladiators moving forward. Uh, the fans should be pretty excited. And there's a lot of unknown here on, on the landscape for all of these teams now with a, a big patch coming into play as we head into playoffs. And that'll definitely change how uh, you know main tanks are selected or which ones. And of course, our hero pools, which I think currently feature quite a few popular heroes. The Zai is going to be available again. So will the Genji and Tracer, for example. So a lot of these teams now are setting their sights uh, on those playoffs, especially the knockout rounds, and uh, thinking about the opponents they want to select. Of course, later on, we'll get a chance to see who will be selecting who in our selection match. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, for us that we've sort of had a look at the patch and try to get an understanding of where we're going, do you expect the Gladiators to be strong in a meta that sort of changes how tanks look? I think they could. I, I think where if we see more dive come in and uh, know some more Winston play, Diva as well, I think that kind of suits OG in space the best. So I think seeing those types of heroes come in, uh, you know, potentially with what could come through with the new patch uh, and the meta, I think definitely bodes well for the Gladiators. And here we are. We are at the end of the regular season. Just want to take a quick moment from myself, Matt, and the rest of the broadcast team to, to thank everybody so much for tuning in and being with us on this journey. It's an honor and privilege to, to bring you guys these games. And while I've seen so many of you out there say it gives you some normalcy to have the Overwatch League going, it definitely keeps us motivated to have you guys supporting all of us, whether it's players, teams, brands, you know, us casters and production uh, supported along the way. So. Uh, again, much love to you guys. Thank you. We'll see you nerds in playoffs, but first, we're going to head over to our selection show to get some spice and see what our matchups are going to be in our knockout rounds. <laughs>